न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायक विदाउट जस्टिस इवन द मोस्ट हेनस क्राइम्स गो अनपनिश्ड एंड जस्टिस इन श्रीलंका इज समथिंग दैट ऑल ऑफ आर पीपल विश टू बी सर्वड to the wrong to us why i say this is if you recall over the past few months from last year to this year there were a number of incidents reported from state hospitals island wide where substandard medicine was admit, administered on patients and that caused them to be either disabled or to lose their lives and now there has been an investigation initiated on that matter a judicial process has also been initiated and more recently the former health minister who was the environment minister up until 2 days ago has also been arrested and remanded all of this was advocated for and also pushed forward by a group of civil activists and my guest tonight is no stranger to face to face and has also been in the forefront of the struggle against obtaining justice for those who lost their lives as a result of the substandard medicine in sri lanka's healthcare sector and also to ensure that such an act does not ever occur in sri lanka my guest tonight is the former chairman of the public utilities commission of sri lanka and i could say that he is a civil activist now he is janaka ratnayaka thank you very much for joining me mr ratnayaka once more thank you very much for having me here so mr ratnayaka like i mentioned in my opening remarks the healthcare system yeah. and the substandard drugs that were used in the healthcare system dominated headlines yes. in recent months and we saw how several top officials in the ministry of health were arrested and remanded and very recently member of parliament kelly ramukwella who was the minister of health at the time and was also uh, indicted as the eighth suspect in that case yeah. was arrested and remanded yeah. we saw you in front of the cid with several civil activists when it was announced that mr kelly ramukwella was remanded and there were signs of jubilation at that point so up until now tell me how that struggle how that fight has been like you know i think uh, i think this is a very uh, landmark uh, incident mm. where the justice mm. has been served uh, in recent past mm. why i say is that uh, you know that you know many things of this nature has been happening for decades mm. no uh, results that we got uh, positive to the uh, victims right and the culprits has been always mm. uh, escaped and harm the reason is that you know we had a very uh, we have a very po- very polit- very powerful political system in this country mm. you can probably you know politicians of this nature can escape committing any crime mm. but this time with the support of uh, many uh, pressure groups especially uh, civic activists the public and the media played a major role mm. and people do not know my role uh, behind the scene and but you know we have been always with the right pressure groups right to pressurize and to get the justice for the people mm. and sometimes you know people talk of my involvement was at the last moment why is he coming uh, coming forward and you not know, trying to claim i am not trying to claim anything mm. i have been fighting for the people for last maybe a couple of years mm. not maybe for a couple of years maybe a decade mm. so i am they are for the people whenever they need right. my support mm. and my uh, help yes, yes so it has been my this thing you you may know the, the struggle that i went through mm. being the former chairman of uh, pucsl mm. where we fought and not only that you know i spent almost maybe uh, 10 15 million rupees mm. to fight and get the justice to the people mm. but justice has not been served yet mm. so court process is you know lengthy but in this particular situation i think the justice is served mm. and we saw for the first time in uh, sri lankan political history or maybe the in uh, judicial system that mm. the uh, uh, cabinet minister has yes. been apprehended mm. and remanded yes and it's a good sign because uh, although we had a bad uh, history or maybe the 
bad experience in the past mm. now it is changing mm. so things are changing at the right time yes. and uh, you can't stop it mm. it's part of nature i i, I also feel right. now see this uh, scandal maybe you know uh, not only a financial fraud mm. I, i consider this as a genocide as well right quite similar to what happened in during the world war 2 in mm. uh, germany where you know hitler used you know many uh, drugs and you know did many uh, experiments mm. using people to kill people mm. now he did it purpose maybe to you know eradicate uh, the the community that he did not like but yes. here what happened is the innocent community mm. who has no support mm. from anyone mm. this is you know more critical than that because hitler had a reason but this politicians and the hierarchy did mm. not have any reason right they held the general public mm. again the not the general public the most weakest people right. who are depending on uh, the government healthcare system mm. now see so called uh, ministers and the powerful people they never go to these hospitals they never administer any drugs of this nature mm. probably they will go to another country mm. and you know request things now see what happen now now this minister says that you know he is sick mm. and uh, no sooner the politicians uh, go into the prison they mm. become uh, patients and this is the first the incident hospital. you know we have been we have seen this uh, many a times mm. so the most powerful people powerful people when they are just become uh, the culprits and when they are imprisoned mm. they just you know try to get you know and the advantages this mm. is a, this is a system that we are talking about not only the justice to the people but mm. you know this is also not justice mm. now they become patients you know they they probably you know request you know many things you know this very unfair mm. now uh, this now the this system should change mm. now the that's why i said that this is a landmark uh, incident that you know things are starting to change mm. because we are talking about 75 years of uh, the problem that we had yes. this is part of that problem this mm. is not an isolated si- issue that mm. you know you cannot get this uh, you know this as a you know simple incident yeah. so things are changing and uh, to get this change i think many people mm. from the you know ex uh, maybe you know the especially the civic rights yes. activists mm. the media mm. the general public mm. and many many played a very important role but did we see any involvement mm. from this 200 uh, the other other politicians in the uh, the country no mm. we did not see yeah. they, they only the pressure groups were the public yes we did not get the real support from mm. the other pressure groups like you know other parliamentarians mm. you know other, other groups they were not part of this mm. and therefore it is important that you know since we got this landmark decision mm. and there are not only uh, issues with the healthcare sector you know mm. there are many other areas that where we need mm. the justice be served yes i think uh, those, those things also will be coming into into the light lime light mm. in the very near future because we have you know many many things with uh, power purchase agreements mm. and uh, many things you know when we talk about you know the imf uh, bail out mm. we are talking about you know what procurement process mm. now when when there is no procurement pr- process when there is no transparency mm. this type of things will happen mm. because b- this the uh, politicians and the people on top think that you know others are just fools yes they are not fools mm. they know everything but you know they they did not have any opportunity mm. to strike like this this is a good blow for them mm. i think we need to move forward from this right so uh, you said that this was a, a landmark uh, yes. decision yes. and using this yeah. as the bedrock we know yeah. for many years in many governments in many uh, established yeah. governments there have been cases of yes. political impunity yeah. those in the upper echelons of yeah. uh, the government or the administration have gotten away with many scandals yes. from various scandals when it yeah. comes to healthcare sector when it comes to infrastructure development and so on yeah. it goes on but do you believe that this can be used as the bedrock to eradicate that political impunity to those who thumb their noses at the sight of not following due process those who think that ca- they can engage in corruption and get away with it simply because they hold high power and high offices in a, a certain administration do you believe that this is going to be the start of many a sectors and now you you spoke about civic groups and pressure groups yeah. this the healthcare sector is only one sector that is shrouded yeah. in uh, yeah. corruption and malfeasances but 
like you said the power and energy sector uh, the infrastructure sector and so on the, the highways and so on there are so many allegations that have been brought forward over the years so do you think these pressure groups will now turn their attention towards those sectors as well to highlight the corruption that has been taking place and ensure that justice is served i don't think that the the pressure groups and the uh, civic uh, rights or civil activities mm. uh, uh, can alone do this alone yes yes mm. the reason would be the the poet political hierarchy probably will find another way mm. to get away, get away right. with this right. and this has been the system in this part of the world mm. because they are more powerful mm. they can you know mend the law and they can amend you know they can do many things mm. but i feel what has happened now people are talking about a different change mm. now the system is transforming yes. into a different shape mm. so we can get we can use this to change transform the system in mm. this country so the as i told you this is not only confined to the health sector mm. there are many sectors yes. you were talking about infrastructure mm. you talk about maybe the cost of 1 uh, km of highway here compared to maybe the other countries you mm. know maybe 10 15 times more higher then you talk about you know procurement of uh, the uh, diesel and petrol mm. you know and there's no proper way yes. no tender procedures mm. no transparency when you are probably you know giving privatizing you know uh, using the word privatizing you know when they you know give a certain portions of certain entities to people you mm. know there's no process now mm. see remember some time back you know the politicians signed these agreements in the middle of the night yes and uh, nothing has happened up to the now, new you know. fortress deal new, yes mm. now see the things of this nature when the politicians know that you know many people are watching them mm. and there is a precedent mm. now they will probably get little bit uh, upset also mm. they will probably not engage as they blindly did blindly did before like before mm. so this is a good change and system is transforming mm. system for the should transform mm. I, i said that you know other the now say we are talking about 220 plus uh, people for this mm. and there are another 200 100 and plus uh, people again now say they should vo- voice their thoughts mm. they should come out they should support this activist and you know have a collective agreement mm. to eradicate i don't think you can eradicate this mm. but you can minimize mm. and with that system transformation you can eradicate you can bring it to uh, a certain certain uh, you know manageable level. level and the corruption of this country mm. i don't think that it is easy to be uh, eliminated right because it is you know gone into it has pervaded multiple yes, sectors yes. yes so to eradicate mm. that will take time mm. but this change what we saw mm. a week ago is a good sign right. of a changing right so what we need to see is now like the health sector mm. see the other areas where with this pressure needs to be built up right so let's let's touch on that uh, mr ratnayaka we know and our viewers also know that you are the former chairman yes. of the pucsl you were also removed as the chairman yes. of the PU CSL by uh, parliament but yes. many people attribute it to the fact that you were trying to protect the rights of electricity consumers in this yes. country yes. and we know that even the power and energy st- sector is uh, mired in uh, corruption in sri yes. lanka there have yes. been allegations there have been stories that have come out of yes. those uh, of those corrupt yes. activities so shed some light to me and our viewers about some of those corrupt dealings the misdealings and the discrepancies yes. in the power and energy sector yeah. so i think uh, the many people are aware in this country that i was the only chairman of a commission mm. removed by the majority of the votes from the party mm. and at, at least according to the uh, pcsl act. act and we leave aside we, mm. we were leave that aside and talk about uh, maybe the corruption that take place mm. in this you know entities mm. now you see we were talk- say remember maybe one and a half years ago right. at the cop meeting at parliament i said the fuel prices could be reduced mm. and the formula uh, published or maybe the tweeted by the minister is mm. just uh, you know just numbers right. and there's no particular formula okay. so you have the import cost then you add the other the supporting uh, or maybe the other cost to the the import cost and you say this is a price okay so there was no scientific basis scientific basis okay. and i i i said that you know fuel can be given maybe mm. 200 rupees less than the price of that time okay and it was proved maybe after some time mm. you know, because at that time at the cop meeting even uh, cop chairman said that mm. maybe to uh, at uh, ages department right. uh, or general department to do a proper calculation right. so it has taken almost two years they have not done it mm. but they are unable to do it because they will be exposed exposed mm. 
now that now again uh, there is a case pending at uh, bribery and corruption mm. that you know they are going to look into the corruption of fuel imports right so it is been taking place mm. at the moment and and the other thing that i'm going to talk about since i was uh, into this power and energy sector yes. now you were talking about you know power purchase you mm. know and uh, power purchase agreement mm. without proper approvals yes. now see uh, i have been telling maybe during my time at the pucsl mm. during the time of 2016 to 2020 mm. with the with the with the involvement of pucsl Although the cabinet approved mm. certain power purchases, okay. PCSL did not agree, right. and therefore they saved more than 20 billion rupees during that time. I see. And you can remember during my time, mm. although the cabinet said, with their cabinet decision, increase the uh, tariff uh, of uh, electricity, yes. I didn't agree because mm. it, cabinet cannot make any decision yes. to increase uh, the tariff or decrease tariff because there's a procedure set procedure, mm. and the authority is PUCSL. Therefore, I vehemently disagree, Disagreed. and we did not continue. Mm. So I think I want even the public officer officials mm. top officials to act like that. Yes. If you feel that it is not in line with the uh, the rules and regulations and the law of the country, you can reject it. You have to act in the best act interest in the best of, the of the people. people. Mm. And now, what has happened? In this situation at the health ministry, mm. the top officials not you know rejecting the proposals by the politicians, but they even support mm. and they do the cabinet papers. Yes, and the minister doesn't do the cabinet papers; yeah. the officials do it. Mm. And that's why I said that you know the the the. SLS officers, the people at top should know, and they are more conversant in uh, if, uh, administration and, yes. the, and the, the procedures. Yes, more than they, the they know better than the minister. Minister yes. will come and you know, I also say that you know you become minister today, mm. the next day morning you know everything. Yes. Like what happened to uh, power and energy minister? Mm. You know he was just you know from the minister of fisheries. Mm. He he took go as the cabinet minister of power and energy. Mm. He thought that he knows everything. Right. So this is completely wrong. Mm. So they need to get you know proper officials and get the advice of them mm. and go by the rule of the books and the rule of the country and the other according to the acts and then you do the things. Right. Then they can also escape and the officials has to be careful. Now see, we are talking about only one uh, powerful minister who was in the cabinet. Yes. Now how many officials are in prison? Going to be linked. Yeah. Mm. So they need to be careful, yeah. and they are the people who know this administration and the other procedures. And they know the repercussions, repercussions of engaging actually, in corruption. Yes. And this is a good lesson for the top class uh, officials and the politicians, mm. because if you if you engage mm. in this type of activities, mm. they surely know that you know they will be punished. Yes. And but now when we are talking about this uh, corruption and the uh, procurement process in full purchasing mm. and you know increasing and decrease uh, change in the tariff mm. they do not go by the rules yes now see when there's authority to decide the tariff hike mm. and with when they give recommendations this uh, the again the top officials of these entities mm. go you know take the advice of politicians and they just do it the way that way yes. now, when we are challenging this now see mm. we are trying to challenge all this you know uh, power purchase agreements mm. and maybe illegal uh, tariff hikes yes. and which is which has been already challenged mm. and the things are maybe things will come out uh, in the future maybe more, more more than what we have you know seen already now. because we know that you know there's a little uh, dynamics you know taking place in this uh, you know judiciary sector and yes. every every place yes. so this is a good good uh, good uh, a landmark case again i'm telling you and for people to come out and the general public also should have interest mm. so acts of corruption are now under the microscope yes yes right so you spoke about political parties needing to voice their concerns yes. and voice their opposition yes. against uh, mm. such corrupt tax and misfeasance malfeasance that take place in state institutions mm. but we know that there has been an announcement made that a presidential election will be held. Yeah. And according to your opinion, if you take the mainstream political parties in Sri Lanka, which political party do you believe personally is more capable of exposing the corruption that has been running rampant in Sri Lanka? Now, uh, the debate at the moment is not about the political parties. Mm. People reject 225 members of the parliament. Right. So they have been directly or indirectly part of this what has happened to Sri Lanka. Right. I'm not, you know, 
I am not, you know, limiting this to the present politicians. Mm. Maybe the politicians of the last 25 years. Okay. Now tell me, there are many political parties mm. and they were ruling, you know, one after the other. Mm. But what has happened to us? We have become a bankrupt nation. Right. And if you ask my opinion, which party probably can do better, mm. I don't think that any party can do better because, you know, all are part of this, uh, the system. Okay. And now you see, we are talking about maybe, you know, a political party where yeah, they have around three, four members. Mm. You get maybe political parties, maybe with, you know, 30, 40 seats. Yes. But all have been part of this. Mm. It's not just voicing your thoughts, you know, shouting at the parliament mm. and coming out with numbers and things like mm. that. It is not, you know, because although, although they shout at the parliament and they know for years and years, mm. they are not being heard. Mm. They should take proactive actions to mm. get these this things done. Mm. Therefore, I say, not a single politician in the... Uh, Mainstream sphere. In the parliament oh, okay. can do this right because they, they all have failed mm. collectively right you tell me a single party who was not part of the government mm. now they will say that you know we were not part of the government maybe for the last 10 15 years mm. but when you take them back you know they have been supporting mm. these politicians to engage in corruption and malpractices mm. directly or indirectly mm. and they are the same people who will just shout at the parliament and mm. come out with many things but it is not being heard right no point in just talking, you know, unless you get, get that, you know, get some action to be, you know, to be initiated. Initiated. But we, we, we say the people said 225 yeah. plus one yes. Yes. should Two, all leave. Yes. yes, the 226 <laughs> plus uh, the <laughs> president and the 225 yeah, yeah, in yeah. parliament uh, should mm. leave and mm. they should resign. But at the end of the day, if uh, the fact of the matter, Mr. Atnaika, is there needs to be a president to run the country, yes, there yes. needs to be a parliament. Yes, so yes, yes, if yes. you're saying that. Mm. All mainstream political parties in Sri Lanka are complicit with corruption and what Sri Lanka has experienced over the past two to three years in its economic downfall and the crisis. What is the alternative? Now, Who will the people vote for? Alternative would be, now see, we have seen a failure of our economy mm. and the country. Now yes. we have become bankrupt. Yes. All, all because of this activities mm. of this, you know, ignorant politicians mm. who do not know economics or management mm. or foreign relations, things like that. But they talk big, you know, in parliament and elsewhere. Mm. What we need is maybe, now see, we have given, we look at last 20 years, mm. you know, for many, re so some reasons, they have changed and got, you know, few people to run the country. Right. But they all failed. Mm. Why they failed? Because they, they lack of common sense. Mm. And why the, com the country has bankrupt? Now, see, we are talking about coming out of the situation. Mm. What is the economic plan to come out from this, you know, the situation? Mm. Present government or maybe the opposition or maybe the another party who is who's, who's trying to come into, uh, who has already probably won the elections, mm. you know, future elections, you know. Right. They should come out and tell the people, this is our plan. Mm. This is how we are going to, you know, develop the economy. Mm. This is how we are going to, you know, get the GDP into a different level. Mm. This is how we are going to, you know, get the... GDP growth rate from 1 to 5 percent mm. and this is how we are going to earn money to pay our debts, to import our necessary things and this is how, how we are going to you know, run the economy. Mm. Nobody comes out with that. They talk politics. Right. They not only politics, they talk, politics, they talk mm. about geopolitics mm. also. Before you talk geopolitics, you talk about economy. Mm. How to get this, you know, see we talk about uh, 50 percent of people who are not having uh, meals to eat. Mm. Come out with a plan and say this is how we are going to you know, address, hunger. address this hunger. Mm. And our, you know, problems in healthcare, our problems in education, our problems in transportation, mm. we have problems in every other sector. Mm. They don't come out with that, but they talk geopolitics, they mm. talk about, you know, international relations, they talk about rubbish. Let them come out mm. and tell this is how we are going to improve our economy, mm. improve our productivity, mm. efficiency. This is how we are going to, you know, get maybe uh, double our exports. Mm. This is how we are going to get, you know, double our the uh, tourist arrivals. Right. This is how we are going to get our uh, foreign uh, FDIs. Right. Now, see, you have seen the uh, the port city. Mm. Have you got any serious uh, investments into that? Mm. Like in Hong Kong, like in Singapore, like in elsewhere, Taiwan, right. and things like that. Right. We talk big, but we deliver nothing. Right. And we, not only that, you know, sometimes I, see, I, I, I just, you know, just. Uh, laugh because uh, our, our leader, our mm. president and goes elsewhere and talk about how to change the econ economic landscape of the world. Mm. And without even talking about what we are facing over here. Mm. So what we need to have is maybe a, a 
maybe people mm. who will understand economics mm. who will understand how to develop this country mm. how to you know probably pay these debts mm. and to in, the, improve the lifestyle of you know common people mm. now you see uh, we are talking about uh, 30 40000 people students going into the universities mm. out of 500000 what happens to the rest 400000 mm, right. 100000 drops from all levels mm. do the the government look after them mm. they are the most vulnerable weaker people in the society mm. but is their future mm. then maybe another 200000 from a levels mm. so they just come into the uh, the society mm. without any counseling or without any plan mm. then we talk about you know unemployment we are talking about you know many things mm. but instead you come out and say that how we are going to address these 100000 people who are students who are probably failing o levels mm. 200000 a levels and we are talking about you know unemployment underemployment mm. we are talking about hunger we talk about many problems mm. let these people the veterans of the politi- poli- veterans of political parties mm. who have been there for 20 30 years mm. come out and say this is my plan mm. this is how we are going to do it within 5 years 10 years mm. without talking about you know, 2048 and mm. you know rubbish this is rubbish okay. and even who are inter- now people who have who thought that they have only won the future elections mm. let them come and explain to the people mm. no point in you know sending buses and getting 10000 people anybody can do i can do that mm. i can have a big rally in colombo right. i need only 10 15 million bucks mm. get people and have a big show mm. this is not show this is real life we are talking about okay give the right plan to the people let the people decide mm. on the plan now mm. because we have been talking for 75 years it's not enough talk mm. is not enough mm. it's like you know the indian uh, super league we saw you know the ground support is there for the indian team mm. and everything is for them who won it mm. the underdogs won it right. so game of politics in the future will be like that mm. unless you come out with a proper plan I don't think that we can move forward. Mm. We can't wait another 25 years until 2048 mm. people to, you know, manage their hunger. Mm. We are talking about instant hunger. Mm. So, come out with a proper plan anybody. Mm. If I feel that somebody is offering a better mm. a solution, be- better plan mm. to rescue these people, we are, we are talking about rescue Sri Lanka. Right. Nothing else. Mm. We are not talking about system change. Mm. Uh, we need system transformation, rescue Sri Lanka, come out with a plan. I am I am 100% support in that particular person. Right. I have no intention maybe to come as you know presidential candidate and you know become a fool. Mm. If somebody has a plan even I will support. Mm. But if no one has a plan look at my plan mm. and see let people decide who is the best to run the country. Right. We are looking at a rescue Sri Lanka mm. not system change. Mm. We are not talking about rubbish. It is right. real facts. So, numbers. So uh, Mr. Ratnayaka unfortunately we are running out of time but I must ask you this now you you spoke about you spoke very eloquently about how you can address how one must come up with a plan present it to the people instill confidence that they can rebuild Sri Lanka and you're someone who has now been very vociferous about uh, the decisions of the government on how you can uh, eradicate corruption or manage corruption and develop the country so do you not have any intentions of joining politics there's a presidential election coming up because this is a very open ended uh, spectrum these days that we are living in because no one is confined to traditional political parties at least in in colombo and its suburbs no one is confined to traditional political parties because everyone is looking for an alternative so are you going to be that alternative in the future i have already declared my presidential candidacy and people may not know mm. all these uh, civil activists mm. and uh, many mm. are behind me right and not only the uh, civil activists mm. the clergy mm. and everybody is behind me right and i have devised a plan mm. where the country can be rescued mm. I think we need to rescue this country. Right. We, we have gone to a, a depth that you know we can't just look up because we, we do might see when you are just you know traveling in Colombo everything is you know fine and proper right. but it is not. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately that's all the time we have for this evening's face to face. Thank you very much for joining me this evening and uh, thank you for joining thank me this evening Mr. Ratnaika. Thank you for our viewers as well. Take care and good night.